We'll get started and hopefully everybody can hear me. I got my uh, headphones in just so my background noise with everybody who I said is here, my children, my husband. Um, my dog is not here because that would just be chaotic. He's at doggy daycare today. Um, <laughs> So if you can't hear us or need us to repeat something, um, everybody can certainly chat um, or ask a Q&A. Jackie and I will be checking that periodically throughout our presentation today. Um, we're obviously live and we've never done this before, so we're happy to have <laughs> you and um, see what we put together to share with you guys. Um, so I'm Whitney Nelson. I'm one of the designers here at Granite State Cabinetry, and my partner in crime today is... Jackie. <laughs> oh, Whitney, we lost twice. You lost me? Uh-oh. <laughs> Where am I? Can you hear me? Oh, I'm back. You're back? Can I hear that you? Was a good, that was a good start. You already lost me. <laughs> was it me or was it Jackie? <laughs> I think it was me. <laughs> Oh, okay. My internet froze. All right. Well, again, it's windy, so let's hope none of us lose power. Uh, and if you do, well, you know what? We're doing this again at 7 o'clock, so you can take a break <laughs> and you can always come back. Um, so, like I was saying, I was just introducing myself, Jackie. I don't know where you froze or last heard me, but um, I'm here with my partner in crime today, Miss Jackie. <laughs> And we both are designers at Granite State Cabinetry. Um, and we put together a fun presentation, kind of interactive, um, to just share a bunch of different things with you guys. So the housekeeping, like I said, um, certainly ask questions. We love to hear what you guys have to say or think, or, um, and we'll answer away, and it'll just be a fun uh, presentation and, and all. So to get started, I wanted to share a little bit about who we are. Um, some of you who are joining us already know who we are. Maybe we've done past projects for you, but some of us who, some of you who are joining, um, you might be new to Granite State Cabinetry. So we're a local family owned business who's been in business for over 25 years. And we're in our second generation ownership. Um, Frank Morris Sr. started the company a long time ago, over 25 years ago, and now his sons, his two sons, Frank and Pete, who are in the bottom left-hand corners here in these pictures, are now running the show. Uh, we have a complete design team. Jackie and I are on it, along with a few other designers. We have an installation team and also a project management team. Uh, we design hundreds of kitchens a year, and so therefore we have designed thousands of kitchens. And not just kitchens, we do a lot of other projects um, in the home, which we'll touch upon coming up. So today's agenda, uh, some of the topics we're going to touch upon are design styles. Um, so maybe you might be a more traditional style person or maybe a modern style, and we'll talk about what those different styles mean. We're also going to touch upon some of the most popular trends for 2020 and then some organizational um, items that most people would like to have in their kitchen. So we'll share all these great features that you can add into your space. And then we're going to talk about the galley. Which my some favorite. Of you, yeah, <laughs> I definitely want one of these in my home. So I think you guys will be intrigued in what the galley is. And then we're also going to just have a little cocktail because sometimes you just need to unwind. <laughs> so let's get started. So I'm going to take us to the past. And with this lovely kitchen right here, some of you may be sitting in your home glancing over at your kitchen and it might look like this. It may even look like that. These kitchens are all from maybe the 80s, early 90s. Reminiscent of that time are definitely the arch doors uh, that you can see on the oak, um, laminate countertops. Over here on the picture on the left, we have your traditional, that white kind of laminate with the oak edging trim. I know my mother-in-law used to have a kitchen like this until we uh, ripped it out quite some time ago. Uh, and then also the peninsula too, where the cabinets are above um, the peninsula really kind of just closing off this space. 
So why am I showing you these? Well, hopefully that's why you're here today with us is to change this because again, this is something that was popular 20, 30 years ago um, and ch you know, trends change. Usually every 10 to 15, maybe 20 years, um, people are looking to kind of get that itch to start to change to something new and updated. I also wanted to share this one, um, which is actually one of my current client's kitchens that we're getting ready to rip out um, in the upcoming weeks and months. And um, although it oh. is fairly current, oh, I see a question. They popping in, that Jackie. That looks like someone lost some audio from you. <coughs> I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay. Yep. Shannon might be sitting in the same windy area as us. <laughs> <laughs> so on this kitchen, you know, although it's got, you know, granite countertops and tile backsplash, just very dark feeling. Um, and this was done in the early 2000s. So again, when we think about it, we're in the year 2020. That was 20 years ago. Um, and so they're just looking to freshen it up with something a little bit more bright and cheery that suits their style. So we're going to talk about styles and what styles appeal to you. This is probably something for you to start thinking about um, if you're getting ready to do a remodel project because it's going to help us put you into something that you're going to love for years to come. So maybe you've got a modern style and or maybe you have a farmhouse style. We're also going to look at traditional styles and transitional styles. So maybe you have no idea what any of these mean, or maybe you're wondering what's the difference between traditional and transitional. Uh, so that's what we're going to go into and explore all those. Um, so that way, maybe it will help narrow down to what you want to see in your future project. And then that way, it's helpful for when Jackie and I are designing your space again, we're creating something that um, appeals to you and you're going to cherish for many, many years. So we'll start with modern. Modern kitchens definitely are clean, straight lines, uncluttered, basically unfussy. Um, you will not fussy, and you know, just very neutral, solid colors. So this first kitchen that we're going to take a peek at <clears throat> has very solid, straight lines in many different areas. One thing I like to point out is the door style. It's a slab, white door, um, and even on the island, it is slab all the way around, very simple, and in a nice dark gray. Paint typically tends to give um, that, you know, solid kind of color look because it's just one solid color. There's not really any depth to it. Uh, the other straight lines that you see in the kitchen are just, it's just the overall shape of the island. It's very linear in length um, with the long island and then the perimeter in the background. This kitchen also kind of shows a little bit with a touch of mid-century modern, uh, which is reminiscent from like the 30s to 1960s. And with mid-century modern, because we're starting to hear a lot more um, mid-century design popping back up, uh, typically tends to relate to more organic or geometric type shapes. So when I look at this light fixture, that to me Pretty. speaks, yeah, mid-century modern. Definitely. This next kitchen, um, again, just shows how simple um, yet beautiful this space is. And again, has a slab type door, long, long linear island, um, solid colors again. And the other cool thing is the hardware in both of these kitchens are actually the same. Uh, they have these really sleek little tab poles at the tops of the drawers or the bottoms of the wall cabinet doors. So again, just not adding too much detail, just very streamlined and uh, simple. And you could even do a touch latch if you didn't want any hardware at all. You just push and the door opens. That's right. That's a really neat feature. Yeah. All right. Next, next one, farmhouse. My favorite. So, I love farmhouse too. And <laughs> a lot of us probably can relate to that because I know we all probably put our eyes on HGTV and Joanna Gaines is all mm -hmm. over it. And she's really done a great job at pushing this farmhouse. A little bit of industrial, a little bit of mid-century modern style um, that she designs with. Um, but with farmhouse, you basically just have that really warm, cozy, inviting feeling. Like 
I would love to go sit in that kitchen on the left with Jackie and have a cup of coffee all day. <laughs> and I feel like we would just sit there and chat for hours. It's just warm and inviting. Just the need beauty. baked goods to go with it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, we, we could probably whip that up. I think our daughters have both been baking a lot lately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so within the farmhouse style, you typically generally see um, a lot of wood elements can be added in. So the kitchen on the left, you see the beautiful wood beams, uh, the stained island. They carried that also through on the wood hood. Um, and also the textures. So you also see, again, the warmth of the texture of the grain of the wood, the texture of the baskets. There's so many different ways that you can add in different textures. Um, you also generally see white painted cabinets oftentimes or some sort of painted cabinet. So the kitchen on the right, we have a beautiful white cabinet and then this really like dusty colonial blue island um, as a nice soft color to just add to this overall space. Other things that are most prominent with a farmhouse design is you'll oftentimes see a farmhouse sink so you can kind of see that right here also known as an apron front. You don't necessarily have to have that style sink but a lot of people like to have that in there um, and you'll also see that you'll end up with some it's okay to mix your metals uh, so maybe you have a dark bronze or matte black colored faucet and maybe you do a nice you know polished nickel hardware for the cabinetry. The other fun part about farmhouse is, again, that texture and pattern. If you take a look, both these kitchens have beautiful pattern tile backsplashes behind the ranges. Um, so they had that pattern tile on the kit, this picture on the right, but chose to just let that kind of be that focal point there. And on this hutch piece over on the side, they actually put some beadboard back there. So another layer um, added to the design. So some Whitney, questions. someone is saying, yeah, so how many, so many choices, can you help me decide what might be best for my space? Absolutely. We can definitely help um, choose. That's what we're here for. So Jackie and I are trained to take your inspiration photos and look at them and know exactly what style you're trying to hone in on. Because a lot of times people come in and we're like, well, I really like this kitchen, but I don't know why. Um, right. So that's what we're here for, to tell you and compare and look at each picture and say, well, it seems like, you know, Jackie, that you really like um, <laughs> that farmhouse kind of look. Yeah, we can kind of pinpoint in all your wants and needs that you find, because lots of times we have a customer that tags a picture but tells us nothing about it and come to find out they love the faucet. So it helps to kind of talk to you about all the pictures that you're bringing in and kind of it's like a big fun puzzle for us to pull it all together and figure out what style fits you best. <clears throat> That's right and so we're here to help you select all finishes, um, whether that's obviously your cabinets and your counters, your tile backsplash, your lighting fixtures. We'll even help you with your bar stool selection um, to just pull that whole look together for you because Quite honestly, Jackie and I love doing this. So that's right. how we do fun what we do. <laughs> this is fun. It's easier to do it for other people than it is for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Um, I saw another question pop up here. Let me yeah, see she I says, can... I have a smallish kitchen. Would this island work on a smaller scale? Absolutely. We can, um, once we come out and we do a measure, we're able to take all those measurements and we design away um, in our computers. And it really helps us give, you know, a two scale uh, representation of what will fit and work in your space. So maybe an island, um, you know, maybe you can have a really great long nine foot long island. Maybe you can only have a five foot long island, but there's lots of possibilities in the way in which we can design them. Yeah, luckily they're all customizable. We make them uh, to fit the room. They're not just a standard size anymore. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's take a look at what the next style is. Traditional. So with traditional kitchens, um, you typically see warmer colors. Much more detail is usually added in. So I'm going to kind of talk about the kitchen on the right here to start and all the detail that's added into this space. In my opinion, traditional kitchens, you typically 
typically see raised panel doors. They have a lot more detail to them. You'll also see um, on the kitchen on the right that there's some beautiful turned legs flanking the island at the ends and as well as um, around the sink base. And then it's just going to take even more detail to pull this whole look together. So the warm color paint, it looks like there's a glaze on here which just adds another um, depth to the paint color. They even added some beadboard in the backsplash, which they also carry through into uh, the back of the open shelving on the island, as well as up in the wood hood. And then did a beautiful, um, nice diamond pattern, traditional uh, shape, diamonds are traditional, um, backsplash behind that range. If you look at the kitchen on the left, Although brighter in color, it still has a really classic, timeless, traditional look to it. Um, the details that scream out to me about this are definitely the posts on the island. We could certainly simplify that leg on that island to have less detail, and it might make it a different look or feel. Also with the wood hood, um, there has that nice curved arch detail. And again, that classic marble backsplash, um, which has been around for ages and years. Yeah, we still do a lot of it. It's so pretty. <laughs> it is, yeah. And that blue uh, is really pretty as well. <laughs> I just did that in two different kitchens. <laughs> yeah, it looks it's a lot like more the color. More popular. It is, it looks like the color of my island in my kitchen too. Actually, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next uh, Wendy, We have another question, oh. which is actually a pretty good one. Okay. Um, our home is fairly open with multiple living spaces incorporated into one area. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I worry that my kitchen won't go with the rest of my home, yet I don't want to blow the budget redoing the whole house, which tends to happen, sadly. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Well, if I, I do feel that it is possible, <laughs> There's some things that you just have to say, you know what, I really want this to happen. If you're ready to <clears throat> redo your kitchen and it's open to the rest of your home, something as simple as a paint color can go a long, long way and change the overall feel and vibe of your home. And then over time, and I always tell my clients this, you don't have to change everything all at once. A home is always a home because it's a work in project, you know, in process. Um, Ever changing. <laughs> and it's always changing. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I change things all the time. I did a bathroom five years ago. And I'm like, okay, can we change it again? My husband put the brakes <laughs> on that one. Yeah. But you know, it is that's part of home ownership. So it's I think it's totally doable. And you know, we're happy to suggest paint colors um, that you know would work from flowing from the kitchen into maybe your living room or your dining room um, and sometimes it's just a matter of you know, changing one or two furniture pieces it's not necessarily having to change everything or maybe it's just changing a rug or your window treatments um, right. yeah so things like that i would say you know definitely will uh, help. and we love to help with all of that even though we don't sell rugs we love giving our opinion yes <laughs> <laughs> All right, so transitional. Some of you might be like, what is this? Well, transitional to me, and I know Jackie would agree, and a lot of us here at Grand Estate Cabin Tree, is that perfect mix of traditional and modern styles. And maybe even adding in some, you know, farmhouse vibe here or there, depending on, you know, which, you know, what the feel is of your home. The perfect mashup of all of it. <laughs> yeah. So this kitchen screams transitional to me for a number of different reasons. Um, so like we were just talking about, your traditional um, style definitely has more details. So the mullions on the glass cabinets here are more traditional feeling. You have some nice straight lines with the beveled backsplash. And this faucet just screams classic, kind of a little bit of Victorian feel to it. So we're kind of mixing all these different elements to create a really beautiful look. Um, you can also see we put a farm sink in here, you know, and although this kitchen isn't screaming farmhouse kitchen by any means, it's okay to add that style in. And some of the modern takes on this kitchen is the hardware. It's very um, straight lined and it's on trend with the brush brass movement. Um, yes. So we're adding that warm, you know, color to the uh, overall feel of this kitchen. So it also makes for timeless design. 
what I love about this kitchen is it's not white. Um, it's <laughs> funny because it's refreshing. You know, a lot of people come in, obviously want white, but wood cabinets, stained cabinets are still there and they're here and they're coming back in a lot of different colors. Um, we're going to talk about that as well. But what makes this so timeless is just the simplicity of the door style and also just again adding that traditional marble backsplash just kind of relates, you know, those different styles to mesh really well. Yeah, it's one of my favorite hoods, that one, or uh, woods, that one is walnut mm. with a portobello stain. It's so pretty and rich. Yes, very and rich And the, counter the countertop in that one, believe it or not, is actually granite. Um, yeah. So she wanted nice, warm, neutral tones and didn't want it to be too um, shiny and polished. So that's actually a leathered granite. Um, it came out really, really cool. I think we actually just put this um, granite on display in our showroom too. We did. <laughs> yeah. So feel free to, when our showroom opens back up, you have to come by and see it. We actually yeah. updated, um, we had existing cabinetry that we still felt um, is in style and so we just really wanted to change and update the display with a new countertop and new backsplash uh, it came out beautiful so we hope yeah. to be able to show you guys that soon when the showroom's back open see we're ever changing too <laughs> <laughs> yeah worse for us because we see all the new stuff all the time so we always want to change something <laughs> that's right yes it just makes you know kind of the world is your oyster and mm -hmm. you get to use us to be able to see all those new products so you're not overwhelmed and we help select what's perfect um, with a few choices for you right so the other great thing about transitional is that it really just creates a sense of sophistication um, and just an overall happy feeling um, with clean, simple lines and some pops of color. So in this space here, we have color on the island with a nice navy blue. The white is just obviously classic and crisp. And then I always tell my clients, although they want to add color, you don't necessarily always have to be so permanent with it. You can add color in the accessories that you add into your space. So just like this homeowner did, they added, you know, that beautiful blue that they really love with some different um, bases and plates and their artwork and even their window treatment over on the far side. And their rug has got a little bit of that blue too. So it's, it's great to um, always think outside the box that even though when you come and see us, and you're like, oh, everything I'm picking is so simple in color, that's okay. We're here to help give, you know, show you ways to put extra color in. Cause maybe quite honestly, you love hot pink and maybe in two years you hate that hot pink. So if you do it in a less permanent way, it's easy to change. So to just finish with transitional, it is definitely one of the most popular design styles that um, we design at Granite State Cabinetry, although we design hundreds of kitchens again with all different styles. Um, but you can just see, uh, to reiterate, kind of those simple clean lines of the door style, nice simple shaker style door is most um, popular within this design. Um, and again, adding some of those traditional elements, you know, this post on the, on, the, on the island here has a little bit of detail. They chose to do an upgraded edge on their island to add just that little bit of more elevated look to the island and make it stand out. Um, and again, the simple curves of the wood hood. So overall, just very timeless feeling. Uh, and a design that you know, again, will last you 20 years uh, plus down the road. But if you want to change your kitchen in 10 years too, that's okay as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll still be here. <laughs> we'll still be here. That's right. Uh, all right. So we're going to talk about some trends before I go on. I don't know if there's any more questions on the different design styles that we touched upon. I don't know if well, I, I answered a couple in the Q&A. Um, one customer had said, or one person had said, where do you get your lights from? Um, oh, and I answered question. her in there, but we send a lot of customers to Just Lights in Nashua. Um, yep. They have a great selection, a wonderful staff that's very helpful. Um, I've even gone with clients sometimes if they need that little extra bit of help. Um, mm -hmm. And they also extend a discount to you if you say that we sent you, as well as call us when your lights are in and we pick them up. <laughs> so they make it very, very easy. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't open the Q&A for some reason. I don't know why. 
Okay, I got you. We just got another one in the Q&A area. Um, <laughs> do you do flooring? Um, we do. So our business is a design build firm. Um, so we can do as much or as little as you need. Um, so most of our business, we do handle the full scope of work. And what that means is we have Pete, who's our project manager, who runs all of the subs. So the electrician, the plumber, the drywall guy, the flooring contractor, um, the window replacement, the demo guy, we handle the whole thing. So you only have to know our phone number to the office or Pete's cell uh, makes it very, very easy. Um, and flooring, uh, we sell tile in our showroom, but we also work with a couple different flooring contractors for wood floor as well. So we do handle all of that if needed. Awesome. And that's the best to be able to pull it all together and be that one-stop shop for all of our clients. Yes. But and should you have your own, way too. that's yep. right. Should you have your own contractor? Again, we're here to, that's the beauty of using us. Uh, you get to utilize all of our skills. All right. So trends for 2020. One of the first trends that we seem to be popping up are warm organic tones. Look at this gorgeous stained wood cabinetry in that natural kind of little bit of honey, a um, little bit of gray, just overall very organic feeling. Yeah. And especially when paired with white. So white is extremely popular still. I'd say almost 99% of our clients <laughs> still choose white, which I is okay. Like Different but, shades, but white. <laughs> yeah, white, but there's lots of shades of white. <laughs> and so now we're typically starting to see, so that gray and white um, scheme that's been so popular for what, a good 10, 15 years, 10 years? Yeah, probably, yeah. About 10 years, I'd say. Um, you know, we're starting to add some of these warmer vibes in. So for instance, like the two kitchens that I was just kind of drooling over here with <laughs> the warm wood um, cabinetry, you know, there's that big, nice combination or balance of the two. So your painted cabinetry plus some stained cabinetry, or perhaps if you want to go with all paint, um, you know, it's, you could go with a nice soft cream, maybe a little bit of gray undertones to that paint. Many of our cabinet companies offer custom paint colors, so we can literally just open up the paint deck and find that perfect color for you. Another big trend with this warm kind of organic movement that we're seeing um, is the gold hardware. So gold hardware has been around for quite a few years now. A lot of people are like, oh, is that going to go out of style? Um, you know, it's, it's been here. I think it's going to stay here for a while. I yeah. love gold. I have gold in my kitchen. <laughs> I did my kitchen five years ago and I would not change it for the life of me, but that's just me. Um, black is also starting to become popular. So again, those mix of those finishes. So you can see the gold faucet in that middle picture, just kind of peeking out there over the apron front sink. Um, and then they chose black hardware. So it just balances itself out, gives that little pop of color on the cabinetry that, or that contrast, I should say. Um, and then still showing the, the gray coming through. So most often you'll see that in the countertop. So a white counter with some gray veining or even your backsplash has some gray in it. Um, and all those kitchens show that. So overall, just a really happy kind of um, airy feel, cozy feeling for sure, um, is how yeah. I see these kitchens. Really pretty. Yeah. I want them. <laughs> yes, me too. Next house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that there's wood floors in these kitchens. And so a lot of people are like, oh, what wood floor should I put into my kitchen? Um, wood floor is definitely the most popular choice uh, to just, again, add that warmth. But it's also softer on your, on your back and on your feet. You know, it's, it's not cold like tile. Um, you can certainly put tile in your kitchen. There's great wood look tiles that are available. If you can see that in this picture here, it's actually in a bathroom and the one up at the top. Um, and that looks like wood. So you can always radiant floor it and heat it up and then you get the best of both worlds. Uh, Whitney, we have another question. Sure. Um, where is the best place to get accessories like the faucet? What is the best company to use for faucets and are touchless still in? 
Oh, yeah. Touchless <laughs> definitely is still in. Um, yeah. The, the technology has gotten a lot better over the years, for sure, on those faucets. And a lot of people, because when you mix like meatballs, you've got stuff all over your hands. You're like, I don't right. want to touch the faucet. So you can just, <laughs> it's automatic, which is nice with kind of that wave of your uh, hand in front of the faucet. Um, yeah, Rizzo and Delta both make really good ones. Yeah. Um, and as far as where to get them, you get them from us. <laughs> Yeah, um, we sell everything that you're going to need, um, except your plates and bowls and pots and pans. <laughs> um, but yeah, we help you pick your faucet, your sink, your hardware, your cabinetry, your countertops. Um, if we're do we have plenty of faucets in our showroom to choose from. We have a whole section in the back, um, which we'd love for you to come visit. And then you can see what everything we have once we're open. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but if we're doing a master bath or say, for example, that requires many more faucets and fixtures, um, we actually go with you to one of our uh, local plumbing supply houses and we walk through everything with you. So you're kind of not there alone wondering what the heck you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to be getting. We help you with the whole thing. That's right. Um... I just saw another question pop up here from Lisa. I'm going to get to that question yep. in just it's a minute. Coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> um, then I, I have one other thought I wanted to say here. Oh, the, uh, the, the, the hoods um, in these kitchens. Uh, so typically we're starting to, again, that overall really finished, you know, fine cabinetry look uh, with wood hoods in the kitchen on the left and in the middle. And then you can see the gorgeous um, metal hood. These style hoods are becoming really, real, you know, really, real popular. Uh, I think Jackie just had a client put one in. Yes. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> and it's gorgeous. <laughs> we're just waiting to get pictures of that uh, kitchen and we'll be sure to share uh, yes. as well. So That one's magazine worthy. I want that kitchen very mm -hmm. badly. <laughs> it really is. And also the other last thought I had quickly on this was another way to um, add a warm feeling without being stained wood is that there's a lot of, uh, many of our cabinet companies are offering textured laminates now, which have that look of a faux, of, like it's of a wood grain, um, super durable. We actually just put one on display in our showroom. We can't wait to unveil it. Um, we're almost done. And again, once the showroom's open, it will be complete and you'll have to swing by and check that out because it's a great alternative um, for a wood look and very um, cost effective, which is great. Uh, Whitney, we have another question um, mm -hmm. that I don't see the answer that I would have in any of these pictures, but we can, I know it was in one of the past ones. Um, mm -hmm. Are the days of a microwave over a stove over? <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's a good question. Well, not necessarily. Sometimes in some kitchen layouts, that's the best place for it. Um, yep. You know, it really depends on uh, how much storage you're, you have in your space and, you know, what you might be willing to give up in your base cabinet storage. Because oftentimes now we're seeing uh, microwave drawers, which we have those on display in the showroom as well. Um, so it's placed in a base cabinet. Or you could also have a combination of an oven and a microwave um, in a tall cabinet as another location. So we do work with um, your space and give you recommendations on your placement of your appliances and what type of appliances that you should be purchasing. I don't know if there's any other questions that maybe popped yep, up. I, another one about microwaves. So that was a good one. Are microwaves yeah. hidden? Um, they're almost always a microwave drawer now. Um, yeah. It was actually, Whitney, I think it was in that last slide that had the two white um, kitchens. Let me go backwards here. Oh, uh, yes. Right there. There, there you go. Two. What Good a memory. Nice <laughs> <laughs> so in the front of both of those islands, you see a stainless kind of box. <laughs> those are both microwave drawers. They're awesome. So you hit a button and the drawer comes right out to you. Um, so they're great. You don't have like my 11 year old, every time she goes to use my microwave over my range, um, I cringe when she goes to take the hot soup out that she's just going to dump it all over herself because she's a little clumsy. Um, so this would be much better. You can open the microwave and just lift it right out. It's yeah. so much nicer and it gets it so you can have one of these nice big gorgeous wood hoods. <laughs> yes. 
That's right. All right, so let me go back here. So I think we'll move on to the next trend here. And this is gonna answer one of our questions that popped up. Open and floating shelving <laughs> is definitely um, gaining more and more popularity every year. I feel like um, goes by, you see more and more clients wanting open shelving. And it really just gives you a way um, to add some different um, design elements to your space. So that way it's not just all these solid wall cabinets, you know, covering from every side of your kitchen. Now you have these open shelves that you can display, you know, beautiful plates that you might have, or for instance, like in the middle kitchen here, middle picture, you can see they have a great little plant. They have their um, jars of flour or sugar or oats, you know, and that's, that's decorative and pretty. And that, those are elements that you should see in a kitchen. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to add texture further up, um, you know, your walls in your kitchen because you can tile behind those shelves. So you see, in, again, the kitchen on the left and in the middle that they've tiled all the way up behind there, just taking that texture further and further up um, rather than it just being a solid wall cabinet. So it's nice to have a combination of both. Um, it will truly depend on your storage that you have in your kitchen. And also, you know, I'm gonna be real, it will get dusty. Uh, you're, gonna, <laughs> you're gonna have to dust it. Um, but yes, maybe- you do. I have them. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's care. okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's all an amount. It's just, you know, that balance, finding what you want versus, you know, what you're willing to look past. Yeah, um, I like how they look more. I'll dust it. <laughs> I do too. Yeah, definitely. And it gets, yeah, just, you get to add your personality to it, yeah. uh, which is, which is the nice, nice part. Uh, we do have another question. Um, oh. I know how to answer this one. So um, do you have places that you know of that will buy granite countertops and cabinets that come out of a kitchen? Um, they bought a home and they don't love the countertops, but don't want to waste them. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple different answers because a lot of clients, when they come in, sometimes they don't need a new kitchen. They just want one. <laughs> um, and a lot of customers have had great luck on Facebook Marketplace mm -hmm. um, or Craigslist in selling their old cabinets and counters. Um, or believe it or not, Habitat for Humanity um, is a great resource for donating any old materials that you don't want. Um, and we... We've done that a number of times in that we've demoed the kitchen and taken everything out and put it out in the driveway with tarps and Habitat for Humanity comes and picks it up. So at least you know it's going to a good cost. It's not going to waste. That's a good question. All right. Next trend, color. <laughs> so obviously this color here is blue. Um, blue can oftentimes be considered another neutral for a lot of people. Um, it conveys, you know, kind of just that solid feel, gives you some depth to your overall space. And there's lots of different ways that you can incorporate color into your space. So the kitchen on the left, these people went all in. They went blue. <laughs> they I love, love it. it. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I know somebody else really close to my heart who has an all blue kitchen. That's my mom. And it's a nice deep navy blue. It's beautiful. Um, I love navy. She loves navy. So we knew it was going to be a home run for her space. Uh, so you can definitely go all in on your color. And actually myself and uh, Kathleen, one of our other designers, we both recently have just had clients do all blue kitchens as well. Yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're super excited about that. But maybe an all blue kitchen or whatever color you dream of is too much for you and you want to just incorporate it in a lesser way. So maybe you look at the kitchen in the middle here where it's just the island and they also carried it up into the hood area. Um, this is probably the most often and common way that we would see color added into most clients' homes. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with this. It's still gorgeous and allows you to just, again, infuse some of, you know, your favorite color into your space and make it feel cohesive, you know, with the rest of your home. And the last way, if you choose that cabinetry is just too permanent to be a certain color, is your backsplash. So we can 
we have so many tile choices and so many different color variations. Um, the backsplash is a really easy way to incorporate color and it's also a simple change, you know, say five, 10 years down the road, if you're like, I just don't like this anymore, then you can easily change that out without having to change your entire kitchen. Yeah, Bernie said um, that the blue goes gorgeous with the gold hardware. It's one of my favorites. Yes. <laughs> you know, you could, it, I'm, if anybody knows me, I love gold, gold hardware, gold jewelry. I wear gold jewelry often. And oh, I, I love today, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I do too with my earrings. And I love navy. Um, you can actually see over my shoulder, my dining room wall is navy blue down there. Um, so yeah, gold and navy just makes my heart sing. Um, but navy goes with a lot of different color combinations, which is again in the design world, sometimes often considered that other neutral. Do we have another comment? <laughs> yeah, Bethany, you brought up a great point that some people don't need a new kitchen, but they want one. <laughs> I think that could be me and my husband. Hey, at Yay! least you're both on the same page. That's, That's good. A good start. <laughs> Um, she's asking if there's a fee for a consultation. No, we do not charge for an initial meeting. Um, you would actually meet with Sue Cannon. Um, she's not on this call. Um, actually, I think she might be hidden, but she is here somewhere. Um, <laughs> but she is your initial contact. So you'd have a meeting with her in the showroom and an hour is well spent. Um, you'll mm -hmm. go through, look at different samples, get a really good idea of what you like, as well as budget numbers. So you kind of know what you're looking at um, before we start designing for you and we okay. don't charge for that awesome that was a great question um all right so my next slide more color but totally <laughs> i different. love this one <laughs> i know some of you may be like moaning like deep down like in your mind <laughs> thinking oh my gosh because i i know kelly one of our designers she's like this yep. just makes me think of my mother's kitchen <laughs> Or bathroom, that avocado green, but green is back, folks. It is. Sorry. Um, I'm fighting and as you, to get it in. Yeah. <laughs> in the showroom. As you can see, I mean, these two kitchens are very beautifully done. And, you know, the kitchen on the left has a little bit more of a sage kind of green. And they've incorporated some different wood elements in there. So bringing that natural feel in, brightening up the space with a brighter white colored counter countertop. And then adding some more warmth in there with um, a cream kind of tan colored cabinet. Uh, so, so many different ways that you can go. And you can even see on the kitchen on the right that they have a tan colored island, white color counters, and then this gorgeous olivey green and then that gold hardware. Gosh. Also, if you know me, I love army green. <laughs> you <laughs> and do. And gold. <laughs> These are my two colors. So I'm they like are. so excited to uh, have these colors come into play in, in my everyday life and my job, you know, not only just with what I wear, but um, be able to put it into people's homes. So yeah, green is here and we love it. All right. Um, one more question, oh, Whitney. Um, sure. Linda was asking, are you accepting consults presently? We sure are. <laughs> Great question. Our, um, our showroom may be temporarily closed, but we are all working remotely. Um, we've all been well-trained in Zoom now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've been doing um, Zoom calls with customers to show presentations. We have slideshows um, just like this that we show all of their renderings as well as a proposal. Um, Sue has been doing those calls as well as phone calls for those initial appointments. Um, so yes, definitely reach out. We're still working. Yay, great question. Just more, yeah. co just more cozy lately because we get to be in leggings or maybe jogging <laughs> pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, so one of the last trends that seems to be most popular that I want to touch on quickly is just pattern. Um, and pattern just adds, you know, kind of, you can make it as fun or as simple as you want, but it gives just that pop all of a sudden. And whether you decide to maybe use this tile 
um, this pattern tile on your entire floor, or maybe just like in your backsplash area, like we saw in those two farmhouse kitchens. Um, perhaps it's your bathroom that we might be working on or your laundry room. You know, those are places where you can really start to have fun because it's not a huge, um, you know, it's, it's not the room you're in every single day. You know, your powder room or your uh, laundry room or your mud room, whatever it might be. But it definitely allows you to create uh, visual interest and have fun with it. So the cool part about these tiles is that they're all very similar in their tones and color, but they all have different shapes. So there's not, you know, any really sharp contrast happening, which makes these patterns really flow and jive together. You have a question, Jackie, pop up. Yes. <laughs> this is great. We love that you're all asking such great questions. <laughs> um, would love to know some thoughts on island design of time. Thanks. Planning for seating for four. We can do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In that initial meeting, um, you would send us pictures of your current space, and that gives us a really good idea of what we have to play with. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to go to the next slide there. Is there a chat thing? Let's see here. Yes. Um, someone's asking, can I incorporate a TV in my kitchen? Yes. Yeah. Um, we actually have in our showroom, we have TVs. One comes down from the ceiling, one comes down from a wall cabinet, one comes up from a countertop. Um, so we have some really cool ways to incorporate a TV actually in that dark walnut kitchen that mm. we had done. Um, you can't see it, but in the um, knee wall, and actually I can show you in our last slide because that picture comes up yes. again. Um, the TV actually comes out of that little half wall. So it's pretty cool. It's awesome. We know those husbands need their TVs. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, so that kind of ended our, my portion on um, design styles and some trends that you might see. And we're going to um, move our way into organization. So yes. I'm gonna let Jackie <laughs> take it from here. So this is kind of how I feel like we all feel right now. <laughs> Um, although, you know, I'm on a webinar, so my hair looks better today than it normally does. <laughs> um, so we're going to kind of segue into our, you know, cocktail time. We're going to do a little early, um, cause we said we would share our favorite recipes. So I feel like, you know, being home, my daughter, you know, I'm trying to work. My daughter has all her schoolwork. Suddenly I've become a teacher, which I am not. <laughs> <laughs> um, luckily she's fairly self-sufficient because she's 11, but fractions are killing me. <laughs> um, so I kind of have like, you know, my glass that I would like to make my cocktail in sometimes. I feel like <laughs> this is the appropriate size, <laughs> but you know, today I'm, you know, I don't want to go overboard. So I'm going to use my regular size glass. <laughs> so I'm going to make mine real quick just to kind of, you know, make you comfortable, share my favorite drink. Um, this was actually a drink that was made for me by a client. Um, I did a bar in Hollis and I went over to take pictures and it happened to be the end of the day. <laughs> so sometimes we plan those accordingly. Um, so this one, um, they brought out their liquor from their bar and made me this drink and it's absolutely become one of my favorites. If I can get the cover off this to get the ice out. My daughter did this for me. There we go. <laughs> um, so this drink is very, very easy. You don't need much because it's fairly strong. <laughs> um, so it's literally just a splash of vanilla vodka. You could measure it, but you know, this is more fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just vanilla vodka and St. Germain. If you've never had St. Germain, Mm. I never knew about this alcohol until <laughs> Bethany, Bethany. <laughs> who measures, who measures? <laughs> my own heart. <laughs> um, so St. Germain is kind of like a sweet liqueur. I like girly, sugary drinks. I don't want a beer. I don't want a glass <laughs> of wine unless it's sangria. Um, but this is delicious with the um, vanilla vodka. So, you know, it's supposed to be equal parts. I usually do a little bit more of this. <laughs> <laughs> And then some fresh lime. You want a lot because it kind of smells. Cuts out a the bit. yeah, kills the. Because 
that's really all it is, is just those two alcohols, some fresh lime, slide in a slice. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> See, Whitney's got her favorite drink. Um, so yeah, this one, you won't need many. So I might have to maybe just drink half this and save the rest for our seven o'clock webinar, or I'm going to be useless. <laughs> So we wanted to just share two of our favorite cocktails because it's oftentimes we do go to our clients' homes at the end of their remodel project and celebrate their new space with them. Um, so Jackie, I just posted up Jackie's um, drink that she just made. And then one of my favorite drinks that I often make um, is posted on the left. We'll share this on our social media pages later today. Uh, so that way you can get those ingredients or maybe you already have them and give them a try. So cheers everybody. If Cheers. I know it's only like Cheers, three <laughs> Cheers. but you know what? You it's almost four. four. It's um yeah, it's five o'clock somewhere. Right. So. It's almost dinner time at this point because we don't know <laughs> what time it is. We don't know what day it is. We have no idea. <laughs> so uh, we did have a question come in. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. We did. Um, actually, I gotta find it now. So she was saying, "What would you say the average remodel costs?" Mm. <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> it is. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, typically what we say is you're going to be in an average kitchen um, for kind of a direct replacement of the space without removing walls and all that fun stuff that we do a lot of. <laughs> um, you're going to spend 10 to 15% of your home's value. Um, so that's kind of a rough way to get a beginning budget number. Um, but that first meeting with Sue, when you go over what you are thinking, as well as looking at pictures of your space, I don't know how she does it, but she nails it. She's very, very good at guessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. So again, that um, first meeting uh, and first design, no charge. Sue, it's a wealth, it's worth your time uh, if you're really considering uh, a remodel project. And so Sue is your girl that you want to talk to on that first appointment. Yes. All right. So the previous slide showed us like that crazy girl because sometimes we all feel a little, <laughs> little crazy right now in certain, I mean, obviously just on so many levels. Um, but also sometimes in your kitchen, you feel crazy because things aren't just organized the way that you want them to be. Uh, so Jackie's going to talk to us about um, how to be organized and how to feel happy in your kitchen. <laughs> We're going to make you feel like her. <laughs> I don't feel like her yet. <laughs> organizing is my next uh, project while I'm home a little bit. Yeah. But fortunately, we've been very busy, so I haven't had much downtime, which is good. That's awesome. All uh, right. Real quick, someone is asking, how much will a kitchen remodel raise the value of your home? <clears throat> I... Um... Sue's really good at this. I believe the average you recoup, um, your return on investment is about 75%. We talk with real estate investment professionals um, quite a few times throughout the year just to, you know, kind of gain a sense of the values of homes and the real estate market and, you know, just generally see, you know, is this uh, remodel worth it for the homeowners? So typically you, you, you'll never recoup maybe unfortunately all of it um, depends on how long you live in your home after you do the remodel, but you right. will recoup a majority of it. Yeah. Makes it worth it. <laughs> yeah. Plus you want to live in it and enjoy it. So right. You I don't mean, want to remodel got the kitchen to, just to sell it. You want to enjoy right. that. <laughs> you've got, you've got to do it for you. That's right. the most important. <laughs> all, right. all right. So let's get into how to better organize our kitchen. Um, this first accessory, the one that is to your left, so that is what we're seeing in almost every kitchen we do now, um, is putting the plates in drawers. Um, as we get older, I'm going to be 40 next week. <laughs> you don't want um, a day over 30. I know, right? I figure I'm not in my 40s till next year when I'm 41, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so having plates up in wall cabinets can make it difficult because you're lifting you know, from up above, we just don't have that upper body strength. I might if I exercise more, but I'd rather just put them in a drawer. <laughs> um, it also makes it nice because you can open it up right next to your dishwashers where we try to put this cabinet. So you're unloading everything right into that drawer. It makes it so easy. It makes it easy for the kids to do it. <laughs> makes it easy for the kids to set the table. 
because they can open the drawer and everything is right there. You can put your plates. I've seen customers put their ramekins, um, bowls, saucers, salad bowls, all of it can go right in there. Oh, Shannon's leaving us. Bye, Shannon. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't mean to oh. go to the next slide there. <laughs> and then on the top drawer, we tend to put all your silverware. So um, lots of times because the plates we try and put into a larger drawer. Um, so most people don't have enough silverware to fill a 36 inch wide drawer. Um, so lots of times I find myself putting silverware in half and then a knife block in the other. Um, or just an extra area to store all those random um, utensils that we have, like the lime zester and the ice cream scoop and mm -hmm. you know, all those other random accessories that we all have to buy when we're at a Pamper Chef party. Can't leave without something. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, is, this is why your hair looks like this. Because <laughs> um, everybody's utensil drawer looks like this. It's just a disaster. Um, so we try and incorporate um, dividers to make it a lot easier. This bottom accessory is fairly new. It came out, I want to say last year at our kitchen and bath industry show in Vegas. It is my all-time favorite accessory. Mm -hmm. um, I try and put one in every kitchen and mm -hmm. sometimes customers are like, oh, I don't know. It seems like it's wasting space. But customers that have it, when I go back to visit, you know, for a cocktail and to take pictures, um, they tell me that it's their favorite new accessory. Um, so that mm -hmm. makes me feel better because I was right. <laughs> I wish I had this in my kitchen. Yes, this was me not too. around when I did my kitchen. Yeah, it makes it so easy. Um, it every totally utensil does. fits in there. There's also one that goes into a little bit of a wider cabinet um, that has four of those stainless canisters. And in the front is kind of, it reminds me of those like needle things that you used to push your hand in or like push down on your face. Yes. Um, that you can actually just slide your knives right in. They just stick right in that front area. And, and so you have all your utensils and all your knives, as well as a shelf on the bottom for any oils or random little mixing bowls. It's a really, really cool accessory. <laughs> This, we, so I am not a coffee drinker, but I am addicted to um, Starbucks steamers. They're delicious. And we just got uh, the Thermidor version of this coffee system in our showroom. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can make espressos, lattes, coffees, macchiatos, um, steamers, which is what I do. Um, it's just so, so cool. And underneath, we always try and have a drawer to organize all your mugs. Um, whether it's supplied by us or you buy the mug warmer um, from Wolf, they make an accessory that goes right under it. Um, also to your left, you're seeing a drawer that holds all your K-cups, which is kind of cool. We, we actually have this accessory in our showroom, so you yeah. can see it firsthand. Oh, it's coming up, Tammy. I'm gonna show you how to use those corner cabinets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is another one that we see a lot of. How the heck am I going to have all of my charging station, my notepads, you know, my teenagers have an iPhone, an iPad, I have a phone, my husband has a phone. It's just a disaster. Um, we have a much, much better solution now. So this is called a docking drawer or a charging drawer, depending on who you buy it from. Um, we sell both of these. Um, really, really cool. So it fits an outlet right into the drawer. Um, so these are uh, low voltage, so they're made just for charging, but I have done them in two master baths where they are a larger outlet for your hair dryer or your curling iron or your flat iron. Um, they're really cool. They make it nice to kind of put everything in a drawer and shut it so it's away. It's not a disaster <laughs> all over the counter. <laughs> Here's those tricky corners, Tammy. Um, so they've come a little bit of a way. They're not like, wow, I can't believe that. They finally fixed the problem. They're still, you know, corner cabinets. Um, so the Susan on the right, uh, she's now a super Susan instead of a lazy Susan. Um, so it's now you have a permanent shelf in the middle of the cabinet and then a tray is mounted onto each shelf. So it spins independently. It's not like um, one of the ones where you push the door 
and it rotates around and you kind of lose your fingertip in it and something falls and who knows where it went. Um, this is much better. The door opens and it spins and you actually have the corners of the shelf for those items that you don't use that often, you know, like your flower sifter or something. Um, those can kind of sit on the shelf so you don't lose any storage. The one to the left is called a Le Mans. Um, it's really cool. We have this in our showroom. Um, it's actually a pretty big hit. It goes into a kitchen where we don't have that corner. Um, lots of kitchens sometimes have the stove right up to the corner where you only have like a three inch little filler piece and then it starts the uh, run of cabinets with the sink. Um, this allows us to be in that type of corner where you have a cabinet kind of immediately right after that. Um, it's pretty cool. You kind of open the door and you pull those out and they kind of come out it's kind of like an a S turn a little bit yeah, yeah. like a snake <laughs> <laughs> um, they're pretty cool and they run really smoothly and I want to say they hold about 75 pounds um, so they can hold a lot of weight yeah looks like we have a question here I wish I could see the questions I'm gonna have I to know, figure I'm this sorry. out I'm, I'm oh, holding what? them hostage they're all for me <laughs> <laughs> um, can you add this to an existing corner cabinet um, good question. So the, um, the one on the right, the Super Susan, sadly, those are difficult to do because um, they're kind of assembled before the countertop goes on and in the factory. You can't really get that angle to get those in there. Um, the one on the left, if you do have that style of cabinet, you most likely can put them in. And the reason I say that is because it has to be a fairly large opening. Um, mm. If you're looking at the opening where that pot is sitting, um, that's usually about, let's say, 18 inches. Um, yeah. It has to be a good size um, to be able to put that in there. Um, sadly, kitchens who have this type of cabinet that are not new kitchens are usually a fairly small, terrible opening that you kind of can't even climb into. You have to send your five-year-old in to get what you need <laughs> and hope he <laughs> comes back out. <laughs> That answer all those questions? I think so, yep. All right. So spices. I like that, Whitney. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you picture like yourself shaking right. your spices. Shaking spices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so what's become more and more popular is the drawer spice unit. That's the first picture to the left. So those are really cool. You open up the drawer and I usually try and put it right near the range. Um, and you have, it's kind of like a tiered, kind of angled insert that goes in the drawer and all your spices lay perfectly flat. Um, it fits that standard size McCormick bottle or the small ones, you can double them up. So it fits quite a lot of spices um, and gives you kind of everything at a glance. Uh, the one in the middle is a pullout, um, which is great if you have a nine inch space that you kind of Lots of times we end up with a small space and we're like, what do we put in there? Um, these are great for spices or you can even put oils. Um, lots of times these shelves are adjustable. So you can adjust them up and have spices on the top too and maybe your oils on the bottom shelf. Um, and then we also have a wall spice unit that mounts to the door. So in that unit, uh, what happens is the shelves inside get cut back in depth to allow the um, unit that's mounted on the door to be able to shut in. Um, so another great accessory to have everything quick at a glance. So this is your tray divider storage. So if you're like my kitchen where I have them in the drawer of my range and inevitably you need the one on the bottom. It just always happens that way. I don't know how. Because <laughs> <laughs> you think I use that one all the time, it should end up back on top, but it doesn't. Um, so you have to take everything out. This, most of the time we're placing it over the refrigerator, which you can see, or over the double wall ovens, um, because it's a big, deep, cavernous space that's about six feet off the floor, which if you're like me, only five foot three, you can't reach that very easily, but tray dividers you can, because you only have to grab the front edge of what you're storing up there. Um, and lots of times we see it in base cabinets as well, which you're seeing on the left. Um, it's great for anything really. It doesn't have to be just cutting boards and cookie sheets. It can be all your cooling racks, um, muffin tins, serving platters, Pyrex dishes, um, really anything that you want to be able to store vertically and just grab quickly without having to move a whole stack off the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> it 
trash pullouts. This is kind of a standard. Um, every kitchen we do typically has one of these. Um, you'll see here there are two different types. It's kind of hard to tell the difference, so I'll explain. Um, the one on the left, you'll notice there is a drawer on top. Um, those are two 35-quart barrels. That's your kind of standard trash pullout. Um, they are smaller than a freestanding trash can, but that's because they fit inside a cabinet instead of being out in the middle of the room. Um, most people use the front one for their trash and the back for recycling. And then the drawer, we typically see your trash bags, your saran wrap, your foil, your um, Ziploc bags, all those items. The one on the right is actually a full height. So we've eliminated that top drawer, which allows you to get two 50 quart barrels. Um, so these are great for um, families that have many children, um, like our owner, Frank Jr. Um, he has four kids. So having six people in that house, he needs these 50 quart barrels. <laughs> Otherwise he'll be emptying his trash three times a day, especially now where they're all at home. <laughs> More power to him and his lovely wife. All right. So now we're going to get to my favorite kitchen piece. I want one of these more than anything, I will forgo the rest of my kitchen if I get to just have this in an island. <laughs> um, so now one of our qualifying questions when you come in has become, do you want a sink or a workstation? Um, every kitchen has a sink. Everybody expects a sink. Um, no one expects a workstation. Um, so that picture that you're seeing to the right is the galley workstation. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what that is, is you do everything at it. Um, you prep, you cook, you entertain, you clean up, you do every aspect of your meal at that one workstation. Most times you'll notice right next to the workstation, we try and install um, a single or double burner induction cooktop so that you literally don't have to move your island. You can stay right at that area. What it makes me think of is every time you watch Food Network, which I watch a lot. <laughs> um, you'll notice that they tend to stay right at that island um, when they're cooking. They're not moving all around and using the whole space because they can't. They need to be in front of the camera who they're trying to entertain. Um, so this workstation really, really allows you to really entertain. When you have guests over, this is really what you want. It'll make you look like the most amazing chef. <laughs> Um, so what we have here, this is a video, it runs about three minutes, but I'll kind of walk you through it. Um, it kind of shows you how the galley works. Um, it comes in numerous different sizes. I think the one in this video is probably the five or six footer, um, which is perfect for um, two chefs. So if you and your husband uh, like to cook a lot together, this is awesome to have. Um, so you kind of see there, there's two faucets um, at this size sink. You'll see the induction cooktop all the way over there. Um, so what she's going to do is we're going to make pasta night. Um, so she's starting with the salad. So she used the chopping block to kind of set it up. And now in the colander that's built into a rack, um, she is transitioning the lettuce from the chop block right into that colander. Um, you'll notice there's a wash station right behind her, but you don't need it. You can wash your dishes in the sink too. It is a fully functioning sink. Um, so yeah, she can chop everything. Now she's transitioned it into a bowl that she's going to make the salad in. Um, her lovely husband is helping dinner, which is fantastic. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's going to make the meatballs right next to her. So you can see in the bowl, she's kind of tossing up the salad. He has a half sheet which fits perfectly on the ledge of the galley um, that he's making the meatballs in. So now she's back to the chop block. She's starting to make the delicious garlic butter for this bread. Mm. Um, right in the induction, she probably has the pasta going so that she can transfer right from the induction into the colander. Which I guess is what she's doing right now. <laughs> So that half sheet fits right onto the ledge, so you don't even need a uh, cooking trivet on the counter. He can transition it right to that. So she went from the colander, and now she's going into the bowl, and it just slides. The accessories slide so smoothly along the ledge that's built into the workstation. 
So now she's setting up to serve. So all the cooking's done. So now we're gonna have on the chopping block, all the garlic bread. And then she's gonna have a bowl that has the salad and then a bowl that has uh, the pasta. So family just comes and we've now transitioned into meal time, <laughs> we're ready to go. Um, so everything is set up nice and easy to come grab everything you need. Um, it does have these cool accessories that you can buy as an option. As you saw, she just dropped down um, the containers that hold all the forks and knives and spoons. So it's just so awesome. I want one so bad. <laughs> it streamlines everything to be done all in one yeah. spot. So you're not constantly moving through your kitchen um, to different areas. It just really simplifies the whole process. We had the right. pleasure of um, going to um, the Clark showroom down in Milford, Massachusetts. Um, they're one of our local dealers. Um, well, our distributors, I should say, of the galley. Uh, and we got a full-on cooking demonstration, um, yeah. seeing the galley in action, got to meet the owners of the galley. It was, it was a wonderful day. Um, we learned a wealth of information and it really makes us all want one of these in our own homes. Yeah, I've already designed my kitchen to have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lisa was saying, <laughs> not to be the downer, but how easy are these workstations to clean? They're very easy. Um, yeah. So those, all those accessories are completely removable. Yep. Um, so what you do is you kind of just lift it up and then tilt it back into the sink, scrub it, rinse it, and put it back on the ledge to dry. It couldn't be any easier. And it's a full stainless um, one piece mold. It's kind of, it's an industrial grade 16 gauge stainless steel that's pressed mm -hmm. into a mold. So it's all one piece, yep. um, no seams, which is great. It has sound deadening. Um, but yeah, very, very easy to clean. It actually has stamped in the bottom of it a star design um, on purpose. It's kind of, it pitches everything to go towards the drain. Yeah. Uh, whereas most stainless sinks do not have that. Yeah. So it's very, very easy. The other beauty part too is that all those accessories can stay right there and then you can get your very top tier shelf to cover the whole galley up and it just becomes additional countertop space for you. So everything's closed up and can stay there. You don't need to take your strainer out from another cabinet. Right. It can all stay right there um, in that workstation. Yeah, and the upper it... tier is a really cool accessory because um, it comes in a black uh, wood composite which you can actually use a chalk marker on. So if you're entertaining, you mm -hmm. can use, it comes in sections. It's not one big board that covers that whole workstation. Um, so you can actually place it on a section and have different cheeses and write down little notes of what the cheeses are. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So that's it. That's it. We made it. <laughs> I hope you guys are still awake. I, <laughs> We tried to make this as, you yeah, know, yeah, it's to, hard. <laughs> to know, you know, what is, you know, going to be fun and enticing for viewers to watch. Uh, it's like hosting a TV show, really, I felt like. Right. Um, so we just really all want to thank you for taking the time today to come sit and chat with us about um, design styles and, you know, your organization. And hopefully it's getting you thinking about your next remodel project um, and that you choose to work with Granite State Cabinetry because Jackie and I love what we do um, and we're here to help in so many ways. So I wanted to, again, just let reiterate, everybody knows that we are still working remotely. Um, we work every day, Monday through Friday, heck, even sometimes on Saturdays as well. Um, you know, our work becomes our lives. We truly do enjoy our jobs to its fullest. Um, so you can reach out uh, to our phone number, which does get forwarded um, right to Sue Cannon. So again, she's your initial contact. You can also go to our webpage um, and follow us on our social media. So we are on uh, Instagram and House and Facebook. I won't forget to share those drink recipes because I know those are always <laughs> important to have a little something different in your up your sleeve. Um, and I also shared our personal email addresses should you have further questions for Jackie or I. Um, and we also just wanted to end with two of Jackie and I's um, most recent, well, some of our most recent uh, remodels that we've done. The one on the left is one that I recently had completed. You can see the before and after. So we went from a really traditional style 
to a more transitional style kitchen uh, for those homeowners. And then um, the kitchen on the right is a recent one Jackie had completed. Um, and this is the one where the TV pops up from that knee wall. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse or not, but it is over here on yeah. the side. Um, and it just kind of slides right up uh, with the granite on top and then closes back down. You never know. Right. Uh, uh, we did have another 